In this problem, we're told to calculate the magnitude of the normal force on a 15 kilogram block in the following circumstances. A, the block is resting on a level surface. B, the block is resting on a surface tilted up at 30 degree angle with respect to the horizontal. C, the block is resting on a floor of an elevator that is accelerating upwards at three meters per second squared. And D, the block is on a level surface and a force of 125 newtons is exerted on it at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. All right, so these are the four different scenarios. So let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, we're trying to find uh, the normal force, right, of a 15 kilogram block resting on a surface, right, a level surface. So just some straight, like a table, right? And so in order to solve this, you first need to know what normal force is. So normal force is essentially the force that acts backwards when you touch something, right? So according to Newton's third law, for every action, there's an opposite or equal reaction, right? So if you think about it, like let's say you put your hand on your table, right? You're applying some force on that table, and the table is also pushing back right, with a normal force against you. So essentially, it's just the force that something exerts uh, back at whatever's touching it, right? So in this case, this block is going to be touching this table. So the table is going to exert some normal force against this uh, block, right? And that's what we're trying to find, right? So what is this uh, normal force equal to? So it's essentially, it's just equal to uh, the force that's going against it, right? And you can think about it as the sum of the forces, but in the first one, it's essentially just going to be uh, one force, right? So that's basically what normal force is, but let's just start with each scenario. So for this one, right, the first thing you always want to do is just draw a free body diagram, which basically just means label the forces uh, of your drawing, right? So what we have, right, is just mg, right? So this is the force due to gravity, right? Because anything, it drops to the ground, right? If you're holding anything, it's going to have some force pulling it down, right? So this is the force mg. And remember what I said, the normal force we call f sub n is just the force is equal to the force of it touching, right? So this is exerting mg, so the normal force is just going to be the same thing back at it. Right, so you can write it up here like this, right? Or you could just draw it down here, but just know it's going upwards, right? So the normal force is just going to be exerting back upwards, equal to the forces going down essentially, right? So the way you do this is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction, right? Because generally it's in the y, you always set it to be the y, but the sum of the forces in the y are going to be equal to zero because it's not moving, right? Or it's constant, right? But it's not moving in this case. So essentially zero is going to be equal to, right? So you said zero equal to the sum of the forces. So what are the different forces acting, right? So we have F sub n, and since it's going upwards, right, leave it positive. So you just write F sub n, and then you label, right, mg is going downwards, so we label it negative, right? So this is the formula, zero equals F sub n minus mg, right? So essentially, F sub n is just equal to mg, right? All I did was move mg to the other side, and this basically just tells us the normal force is equal to the force touching it, right? The force being exerted onto the table, right? So it's just equal to mg, and if that's the case, we can just do the formula, the mass, which is 15, multiplied by g, which is just uh, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, right? So you just want to do 15 times 9.8, right? And so go ahead and plug that in. You're going to get 147. So essentially, the normal force for the first part is going to be 147, and then it's newtons. So for A, right, the normal force, F sub n, is 147 newtons. So this is A. Now let's move on to B. So for B, the only thing that's changing is now that it's at an angle. Right, but think about the forces acting on this. So that's what you want to do first. So the force, right, due to gravity is not going to be acting this way. It's not straight down. It's actually just, um, it's going to be like this, right? Because it's turned at an angle, but it doesn't matter that it's turned at an angle. The gravity just still uh, acts straight downwards. So it's actually right here, right? This is where uh, mg is going to be, right? But the normal force is always perpendicular to the object it touches, meaning the normal force is still going to be straight up like this, even though this is at an angle. Right, so if we want to find the normal force, we have to find find the force that it exerts perpendicular, right? Because you said this to be the y-axis and this is the x-axis, meaning we have to find the force that acts this way as a result of gravity, right? And the way you think about this is as a triangle, and I'll I'll show you how that works in a second, right? Because we know the normal force, right? The sum of the forces in the y are going to be equal to zero, right? And zero is going to be equal to, and we do the forces in this, right? It's going to be f sub n. And then minus this force, right? But we don't know that yet. So we have to solve for that, right? And so F sub n is positive, right? Because we set this to be the x and y axis, right? But it's just turned. So essentially, this is still a positive and this is negative, right? And then this would be positive and this is negative. But we're only worrying about the y here. So it's just F sub n minus, and then we got to find this force. So how do we do that? So think about it like a triangle, right? So imagine this is the triangle, okay? And then this angle right here is this angle right here, okay? It's this angle, the angle between the perpendicular line and mg. Right? And so what is that going to be equal to? So it's actually equal to the incline, right? So you just need to know that the incline is the same as that angle, meaning this angle is going to be 30 degrees, okay? And what that also means is the hypotenuse of this triangle, right? I basically just drew it right here, but it's equal to mg. So this is mg, right? And so what we're trying to find here is this line right here, which is essentially this line on this triangle. And what, what you should notice here is we can use trick, 
right? So we're trying to find this. I'm going to label it x, right? And we know the cosine of an angle is 30 degrees, right? Or the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to what? So we know Sokotoa, right? Sokotoa, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the adjacent? It's the x, right? Which is this line right here. So it's equal to the x over the hypotenuse, which is mg. Meaning x, if we just solve for it, multiply both sides by mg, x, right, this force is just equal to mg times the cosine of 30. Meaning what we plug in right here is just this, right? mg times the cosine of 30. Right, and so if we add this to the other side, right, imagine it's just a formula, f sub n, or the normal force, is just equal to mg times the cosine of 30. Right, and it's the exact same as this one, except for, for this one right here, right? It was just straight on, right? So only had to do mg. But in this case, the one that's going straight down, right, that's perpendicular to f sub n, is actually mg times the cosine of 30. Right, so we can just go ahead and solve. So m is just the mass 15 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. Right, so you want to plug this in. 15 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. And when you do that, you're going to get 127. Let me actually write it up here, 127 time, or 127.3, and then 0, 057. So I'm just going to round to 127.31, and then it's Newtons. So this is F sub n. So that's this one. Now let's do this one. So this one's going to work in the same way, right? So we have this mg, the force of gravity, but this time it's accelerating upwards. So there's another thing we have to take into account, right? So we're trying to find the normal force that it's exerting on this box. So essentially F sub n right here. Right? And you can draw it right here, however you want to do it. Just know it's going upwards. And so the way we do it, again, is label all the forces, which we are, right? We did. And then what we want to do is take the sum of the forces in the y direction, right? That's what we did on all of these. So what is it going to be equal to in this case? So in this one, it's actually accelerating, right? And you know f equals ma. And the reason these are zero is because a is zero, right? Because its acceleration is zero. It's not moving. So therefore, in this case, it's actually equal to ma because a is actually a value in this case because it's accelerating. So in this case, the sum of the forces in the y are ma. Right? But what are the forces in the y? Well, ma is going to be equal to what? We have the normal force going upwards, so we label it positive, fn, and then minus mg because it's going downwards. Right, So we're just taking the forces in the y direction. Right? But what does this tell you? If we add mg to the other side, f sub n, right, it's just going to be equal to ma plus mg. Right? So the normal force in this case, right, acting on this box, is just going to be uh, mass times the acceleration plus the mass times gravity. Right? So that's just how we work it out, because it's equal to ma, and then you just write the forces, whether they're positive or negative, and set them equal. So if we just solve this, fn equals the mass, right, which is 15, and then you can just uh, factor out an m, so it's really just equal to the acceleration, which is 3, plus gravity, which is 9.8. Right? All I did was factor out an m, right? you can just multiply it by both. But yeah, so f sub n is going to be equal to 15 times 3 plus 9.8. Right? And when you do that, you're going to get 192. So 192 newtons, that's going to be uh, the normal force for this one. So one more to go. So this one, the thing that's different is we actually have another force acting on it, right? So the first thing you always want to do is label the forces, right? We have mg going down, we have f sub n going up, and then this is the force that they're adding, right? 125 newtons at an angle 30 degrees above the horizontal. So what we want to do, right, some of the forces in the y, that's the first thing you want to do, right? And what are they going to be equal to in this case? So it's not moving, so it's zero, right? So zero equals, and then what are the different forces in the y-axis, right? So this is the y-axis. We have f sub n, it's going upwards, so we label it positive. mg is going downwards, so we label it negative. And then this one right here, it's going downwards, but keep in mind this one's at an angle. So we need the vertical component of it because we want it to be this axis, right? We don't want the angle. So how do we find this angle, right? So, uh, right, and keep in mind it's gonna be negative because it's going downwards. So negative and then whatever this force is, uh, but we have to find it. So once again, we're going to use trick. So if you think about it like this, right, this is the triangle. This is 30 degrees. And then this is going to be 125 newtons, right? Because the, the vector is essentially 125, right? And you just have that to be the hypotenuse. So we're trying to find this right here. So I can call it y. Um, and so, right, we can use sine. So the sine of this angle, right, is equal to 30. Or sine of 30 is equal to what? Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, right? So Katoa, the opposite we labeled y. Right? And y is just this right here, which is what we need. So y over 125. Multiply both sides by 125. 125 times the sine of 30. Right, That's going to be uh, the y component of this force, which is exactly what we're doing. Because we're taking the sum of the forces in the y. We're not taking the sum of the forces at this 30 degree angle. Right, So it's going to be minus, since it's going down, and then this force, right, which is 125 times the sine of 30. Right, And if we want to solve for f sub n, 
all we have to do is add mg in 125 times the sine of 30 to the other side. So f sub n equals mg plus 125 times the sine of 30. Right, so all I did was add these to the other side, and then now we have it so we can just solve. So we know m is just the mass, which is 15, multiplied by 9.8, and then plus 125 times the sine of 30. Right, so go ahead and do this. 15 times 9.8, and then plus 125 times the sine of 30. And when you do this, right, you're going to get f sub n. Right, I'm going to write it right here. f sub n is equal to 209. 0.5 and then newtons. So 209.5 newtons, this is 192, uh, this one was 127.31, and then this one was 147. But yeah, so the normal force is essentially just as, just the forces acting back against it. So you just have to find the sum of the forces in the direction, right? And then F sub n is going to be in there, and then you can just solve for it. So that's the first step you always do. Basically, just find the sum of the forces in the y, F sub n is going to be in there, and then you should know the other variables uh, as long as you just label your thing correctly. But yeah, so A, B, C, and D, these are your answers. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.